Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to be having a look at questions 37 to 39 of section 3 of the Purple Booklet. This is a question about how gases act in a chicken egg. Question 37 asks, anaerobic respiration is likely to be the only respiratory mechanism in which stage? So anaerobic respiration, as you may know, uses no oxygen. And so we're going to be looking in this graph for a region with no oxygen intake. Now, you might be tricked into thinking that on the left hand side, at the very start, at around zero days, um, there might be an anaerobic mechanism here. But actually, you can see how during the original prenatal stage, when the egg is developing, when the embryo is developing, oxygen intake increases. And you can assume that that increase is with demand. And so there might not be any anaerobic respiration. Past that point, you also see that there is always some oxygen uptake, which means oxygen has to be used. And so the best answer you can give for number 37 is to assume that there is no anaerobic respiration in any of the stages represented. So the answer for number 37 is D. Number 38 and 39 look at another graph, and this one's a little bit confusing, and it looks at some of the oxygen pressures at different depths from the surface of the egg inside into the Coriolis. Question 30 asks, which of the following is the best estimate of the difference between the carbon dioxide partial pressures and the oxygenated and venous blood? So in the middle um, graph, you can see it's about carbon dioxide. There are these two arrows that look like this. And on the scale at the bottom, uh, you can see down here, there's 25 tors of pressure. And at 50, you can see here is where the venous blood is. So this is the venous and this is the oxygenated. This is just um, a part of the graph I've, I'm redrawing here. And you can see that from the scale, we can see that this would be roughly around 10 tors of pressure difference. And so the answer for number 38 is A. It's really just knowing where to look for this one. For number 39, it says, considering the system described, which one of the following is possible for the normally functioning embryo at a point in the, and then it gives a few of the different options there. So let's go through them bit by bit, and this one's a little bit more involved, but let's have a look at A. It says, at a point in the bloodstream, water vapor partial pressure equals oxygen partial pressure. Well, you might have noticed that on the right hand side, there's a graph of the water pressure or the water vapor pressure at different depths. And at the level of the bloodstream, which is at the very bottom near the chorea allantois, you'll see that there's actually no water vapor at all. At that pressure, it's in liquid state. So it can't be A because there is no um, water vapor to have a pressure. So A isn't an option. What about B? In the bloodstream, oxygen partial pressure equals carbon dioxide partial pressure. So we've got a, a, a range again. So this is for CO2 um, going between roughly, we'll, we'll say maybe this looks like um, 40 or so, and this is 50 tours of pressure. So let's have a look at the arrows for uh, oxygen. And we can see that if we draw out the scale here and we put our 25 and our 50, there's an arrow going up representing the venous blood return here, and another one going down just past 50. And if there's a point at which they equal each other, then you'd see that there's a, an overlap between the the values here. And as you can see here, these values do overlap. Um, if we were to put the arrows for carbon dioxide onto the oxygen graph, we can see that there'd be an arrow here and roughly another one here. And so because there is an overlap in this section here, there is a point in the bloodstream at which the oxygen partial pressure equals that of carbon dioxide. So that means the answer for number 39 is B. Just to rule out the other ones, just to be sure, it says at a point in the egg outside the embryo, water vapor partial pressure equals that of oxygen. Well, again, you just need to look at the values, um, the range of pressures at that level. And you can see that the oxygen partial pressure outside the embryo, and that is beyond the membrane, is going to be greater than 100 for the entire um, depth. But then for water vapor, 
it's always going to be less than 15 because there's no overlap between those ranges. There's no point uh, outside the embryo where the pressures equal each other. The same is true uh, for D, where the oxygen partial pressure equals that of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's range is between 0 and 30, and for oxygen, again, it's well above 100 the whole time at that depth. So there's no overlap between those, and so we can be sure that the answer for number 39 is B. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.